All right, so uh, the next session is on the network rearchitecture. Um, also, I've called this net netvert um, evolution, and uh, some uh, work that I've been looking at together with Sam, Vishal, and Anil. Um, and it's uh, looking at taking, uh, you know, expanding the netvert functionality. So, Currently, the OVSDB network project includes really two components. One is the OVSDB southbound um, to, uh, that uses the, implements the OV, OVSD protocol, um, various uh, OVSDB uh, schemas, and uh, the network, network, network uh, virtualization solution that currently is uh, supporting the OpenStack networking. So, uh, it's uh, the, currently the, the NetVert is a, it's a fairly monolithic design. It, uh, fo it's focused on supporting OpenStack, the Neutron API, on the northbound side, and OVS switches on the southbound side. The, uh, and the goals of, of the work that we're doing here is to kind of break that up, make it um, allow... Uh, uh, first of all, uh, to support NetVert as a separate application, um, it's uh, right now it's an integrated project. They're kind of different layers of the, the overall overall model, and we're looking at separating that NetVert functionality out. Um, but also to make NetVert uh, more scalable, modular, and extensible. And um, um, w one of the things that I just on this slide wanted to point out was that. This uh, NetVert um, currently uses interfaces with the Neutron northbound via MDSAL, and via the two uh, southbound protocols, it's using both OVSDB and OpenFlow to control these OVS switches. We've been working on, in this past release, the, the addition of uh, um, the uh, Layer 2 gateway support using the hardware VTAP southbound, and um, currently the the southbound protocol plugin is supported, but the, the network piece to, um, to drive that via OpenStack is not there yet. It's a work in progress. And that's kind of, uh, if we go on to the next slide, one of the, the main motivations for this, this work is what we started looking at. How can we, how can we um, you know, when we've been working at, looking at this one southbound um, div kind of device, how do we add a, a new device? And when we started looking at it, it would require reusing uh, or re reusing a lot of the same functionality that all already existed, but there really wasn't a good way to do that, to break it up. So um, what we wanted to do to support this, uh, the hardware gateway was to break out some of the common functionality um, into reusable pieces and then um, just isolate the uh, device specific functionality into different into into their own modules so um, and then thinking a little more broadly um, we, we wanted to do this for the hardware VTAP but there's no reason that it would necessarily stop there so we want to do it in such a way that it's easy to add new southbound devices potentially add different northbound um, APIs so we do OpenStack we probably want to look at some container networking uh, possibly integration with uh, the network intent. Um, in, been talking about integration with VPN service. So I want to do it in a way that's uh, um, that's modular. The uh, if, it is if we're going to be breaking NetVert out into a separate project, we also want to have a, a proper interface for NetVert so that we can support these new applications. And, and as, as long as we're doing all this, we want to try to do it in a way that it, it, makes, it, that makes it more scalable. So I just had a, have a slide in here to, to talk a little bit about just the, the hardware gateway uh, pieces that we're looking at initially and the, the shared functionality. And it, it, it was apparent that a lot of the, the things that had to be done were the same from a, at least a, a high level and just the way in which you do it is different. And so in the, just looking at the layer two use case, which is primarily what's, what's happening in the, uh, on the hardware VTAP, that when a, 
when you have a new port with a new Mac added to an OBS switch, you, you have to, um, on, the, on the OVS, open v switch, you have to add the flows for that, uh, the local flows for that to handle that MAC address. You have to go around to all the other uh, OVS switches and add remote flows to direct the traffic back to the, to the switch where it exists. You might have to add some tunnels. Um, and with the, with the, if you have layer two gateways, you also have to go out and program all those remote layer two gateways um, to direct traffic back to the, um, the OVS switch. But you do it a little differently because now we're using, rather than OpenFlow, you're using OVSDB to promote to program the remote max table. Um, and then it's pretty much the same thing on, a, on the hardware gateway. If you learn about a new Mac, that switch, that hardware device is gonna add information about that Mac that it just learned to the local uh, forwarding table, report the information up to, via OVSDB up to the controller, which would then go around and program all the other hardware gateways with uh, the remote Mac table, and then all of the other OVS switches. So, there's a, there's a certain level of functionality that's the same. So, so when looking at that, as I was mentioning before, we want to support different types of devices. There's the, um, in addition to the OVS switches and, uh, and hardware gateways, there's also there's some, some talks going on, maybe right now, about VPP and, and FIDO. Um, we've, we've looked at ways to integrate potentially with OVN. There could be other, other um, southbound devices to integrate with. Um, we wanna be able to uh, also, as we, uh, during, the last, during the last session, we talked about generic network functions, um, have, a, have a support for developing different pieces of functionality um, independently and making it more modular so it's easier to add new functionality to what, what exists. So I think I, I got ahead of myself a little bit, covered some of these areas, but uh, what, uh, what we're, we're moving towards is a, um, a core piece of functionality, a, a centralized model and uh, a, uh, different renderers for the different types of northbound interfaces and the, and the southbound devices. So just looking at, the, uh, at the, uh, these two, the hardware gateway and the OVS switches, um, we're, we're working on building a centralized uh, network model, so a network model that describes what uh, from the from the northbound side, what is uh, required, so what Neutron is asking us to do. And then also uh, information about the uh, southbound devices, so physical devices, what, what's there, what the network addresses are, all of the information that's needed to build the configuration for the southbound device would be contained in this model. Um, so this is at a, at a reasonably high level. And then each individual type of renderer, one for the, uh, in this case, the OVS switch, would have uh, a way of building its flows and, and configuration. And the, the VTEP hardware gateway would have its knowledge about how to build, render that information onto its device um, and isolate, so isolate that from the generic functions. This, so, as as the, it's shown here, this would be based on a centralized MD-SAL model. The, uh, this netvert renderer, and now this is, before we had this, showed that one block that's netvert, this is taking that and, and kind of splitting it out into these different pieces around this central model. Um, so this, the netvert would take and translate back. The netvert neutron renderer would translate between neutron into our, our model, and the renderers would do their uh, respective uh, things. Um, the, yeah. Yeah. 
and I actually had a slide. So it's a it's it's very similar to the OVN model. Uh, I think it's there are a, a few differences that that um, will. Uh, so it's not exactly the same, but I actually looked a lot at the OVM model in, uh, in, in working this out. Uh, so yeah, there's a northbound, there's information from the northbound that, de that describes the desired configuration. And then based on information, I was just going to get into the, the point that um, each renderer is also responsible for writing information into that model because uh, the OVS might know information, for example, a new port was just added to an OVS switch. And that, um, we, we, we were told about the logical port information from Neutron, but uh, we don't know where it is yet. And so the renderer would learn about it from its local device and write that into the, the network model. At that point, um, all of the different renderers would know, would have enough information now to go and program their, their devices. So yeah, very much like OVN in that respect. Um, the thought is that there, each renderer type can handle one or more devices. The, uh, you, can, you can have, um, because we're based on this MDSAL model within a, within a cluster, you can, have, you can have renderers on different nodes in the cluster each of them may be handling some subset of the devices. So let's say you have, you can have, you know, a third, let's say if you have three controllers, you could have each uh, OVS renderer um, on the node handle a third of the devices to distribute the load. I, I, there's also the potential for, there's another, another session going on about honeycomb. Uh, there's the potential to take this renderer and, and using a honeycomb-like model or Honeycomb itself, put the renderer functionality out on the node and um, further distribute the, the functionality. So just, just one question, do the hardware which are schematically separated even though they use OSTV protocol here? So is it, are the schema objects so different? Is, that, is the reason why they are Yeah, they use, they use different schemas. So it's, yeah, they're completely different other than they use, both use the OVSDB protocol. Yes, uh, so because on uh, Open Daylight, we're actually um, driving this off of the, uh, the Neutron MDSAL model, it's uh, you know, there's no change. It'll still it'll work with the. You're asking about the new yeah, open daylight. Plugins. Yeah, the new plugins. Yeah, so we would still use that same plugin. <laughs> I mean, you could say, you know, you could write a separate plugin for this and talk directly to the Netvert model. Uh, that's not. We're not planning to do that right now, but that, I mean, that would certainly be possible. Yeah, so I think what we need, what we'll need, is a you know well-defined um, Yang model for the the device that describes everything that's needed by that device to um, to to program it. So it's still going to down, probably down at the honeycomb agent. If so, hypothetically, if we're doing that, this is um, the honeycomb agent would probably still talk to the OVS switch using. Um, OVSDB and OpenFlow, but you would talk. Um, the I think the advantage of doing that is that you know o OpenFlow in particular is pretty low level language, and you could you could represent the requirements at a higher level using uh, the uh, um, Yang and um, and talk over NetConf down to the agent, um, which could then pr actually program the flows. So you. Uh, you might d download basically a, a forwarding table um, over the uh, to the to the honeycomb agent, and then the honeycomb agent would take that forwarding table and translate that into OpenFlow rules. So basically, this renderer then will be talking to the agent. So as of now, 
is going up with it. It's not picking the only device, creating servers, then installing a server. Yeah. Like, in case of Honeycomb, it will just say, create this configuration. Configuration will be decided by the agent. How to? It will say just create server. So it will do all the configuration for you. That high level detail is passed to the agent, the component, and that can do the and I think what you end up with is, is like a real thin renderer up here. And then most of the guts of this um, is going to be down here on the, on the node. Yeah, per device model. Yes. That's, you know, that's uh, the challenge <laughs> is, is in all of this. Yeah, so yeah. still some work involved there. And, and, we're, and we're not actually currently working on a, the Honeycomb agent. So, I mean, if anybody's interested in it, I'd be glad to, to work with you. And it's, uh, you know, at some point, I'd like to be able to do that. So, yeah, so plus in perspective, you know, these open vSwitch renderers and the hardware gateway renderers probably is not going to change much. You know, it's like, or you can say, uh, these are just, well, you need to select that one of them is going to configure things, right? So it's just like, all of these boxes, blue boxes, is still a network, right? They all kind of, will logically is application, right? Although they are divided by the, the work they are doing, right? So you need to select which network is going to be your master and is going to do all these from a clustering perspective, there's not much change here. I, I, what I was thinking in on the clustering, let's say we just had OVS switches. And let's say you had three nodes and nine OVS switches. Um, you could divide those OVS switches up in where each, where you have an instance of the uh, OV, Open vSwitch renderer running on each cluster node. And it, but it would be responsible for its three switches. Um, and all of the information needed is, is advertised via this MDSAL model, so they all have the same information and can program their switches. Um, in the honeycomb model uh, and clustering, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I haven't really, uh, I'm not sure how, how that works, but it's probably pretty, pretty similar, though, probably. Anything else? Uh, I think I missed something. Uh, you're proposing a way to make this work on multiple controllers without clustering. Yeah. Uh, and you're saying that it's not going to be clustering? No, with clustering. Yeah, it just requires clustering and then there's It doesn't require clustering. It could work on a single controller. But if you did have a cluster, you could. it, it allows you to distribute the workload across the clusters. Sharding, anyway, the first thing is here, yeah, the clustering, the way clustering is implemented in network, they don't really go and sharding. Mm -hmm. It's shard agnostic, master, owner, that is a totally agnostic, right? It has its own master state and ownership for you know, concept internally. It does not really care whether it's the same shard or a different shard, we don't really care from that perspective. We just, from a clustering perspective, we just see that there will be for, a, you know, 
this render is going to run the three okay? and how those renders actually, you know, uh, work together to make a network. That's, that's the thing which we take care of. So, um, just back to some of what uh, Anil was saying, I think what we, uh, these, these pieces, this open vSwitch renderer functionality and this, this netvert neutron um, renderer functionality and, and the, the netvert functions or services, and I haven't really come up with a name yet, but uh, the, that, uh, that maps these things, this is all part of the existing netvert right now. All that functionality is there, and the idea is to break it apart uh, via a well-defined API, which is the model, so that we can then, in, in addition to the existing functionality, we can start plugging in new pieces of functionality. And, uh, you know, this, this is a, uh, just an, another picture of basically the same thing, but uh, showing the, you know, the, the goal of uh, making it even more flexible than just supporting the Layer 2 gateway, but other types of... Uh, Southbounds, other types of northbound APIs, and you know a lot of the work is to is is to go into building this this model. Um, I did actually when in, in kind of coming up with a uh, a draft model, um, did look at the OVN um, schema, uh, northbound database and southbound database, um, and it's. Uh, the initial focus, this, there's a, just we have a, an, an initial model that we've put together um, that uh, is really focused mainly on the, the Layer 2 gateway uh, hardware VTEP use case, so to integrate those two, and then based on that, we're going to we're plan to uh, extend it for the rest of the, the, rest of the models. And it's, uh, you know, it's built a lot around this, this port, and also you know, this is uh, recently uh, become uh, uh, learned about the uh, the network, the generic network function work, and the the interface manager work, and so I'm going to spend some time to to figure out how to how to integrate that in with this model so that we can um, better be able to to uh, do the application coexistence and take advantage of VPN services from within Netvert. Um, so that that's still some stuff we need to look at. So that was that came kind of after after this. There's but uh, it is built around a, a lot of it is around the port. So information about the layer two networks and logical ports would be would come down from Neutron, uh, but you don't you don't have based on that you don't have enough to go ahead and program devices. You need to learn about the the physical uh, the, the the presence of the physical devices and then. Uh, so each each device would have information about how do you reach that device over the network, you know, IP address, encapsulation type, um, the uh, and then based on the um, learning about a new port being added, the uh, the the renderer would update this uh, the the port to de to describe to indicate what device it, it lives on and within that device where which uh, um, device locator. So even within a single device, you might have multiple VTEPs, for example. In uh, the OVS case, it tends to be one. But on the hardware gateway, you can have, you can have mul multiple. But once you know the logical configuration, the physical configuration, then you have enough information to go off and build the flows. Uh, this, there's uh, a uh, set of Yang files that has recently been uh, um, committed to the uh, OBS to be network project that has more details on on how all this fits together, but these different pieces are represented there. Any questions on this before we move on? Right. Right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll map, and, and some of that will be uh, there'll be some similarities, but it doesn't contain enough information, and so it'll it'll have the that, that the high level configuration, and then we'll fill in the rest. And then the uh, 
it also, uh, there, I see the services as kind of helper functions that will help build, basically build the forwarding tables for the renderers. So provide a high level uh, uh, abstraction, kind of logical flows, if you will, but more in, in I'm thinking in more in terms of forwarding tables that could then be implemented uh, down below. So uh, one of the things also in going through this was looking at how to uh, handle a couple, uh, these are just some ideas that, uh, that um, put, put together on uh, handling multiple multi-segment networks and more um, generic uh, arch uh, topologies. So right now, within NetVert, we really, we pretty much assume a single um, uh, segment. So everything is reachable for every switch that's w controlled within, um, within uh, the, the NetVert domain is reachable from every other switch, uh, typically via over a VXLAN tunnel, but it uh, also support GRE tunnels and, and VLANs, but there's, it's single, single segment. Even if, uh, for example, one of these devices happens to be a layer two gateway, um, this, this would be a, heart, a physical server. It would still be, um, you would still have a, a VXLAN tunnel that goes all the way to the gateway, and the gateway does the, the VLAN mapping. Um, considering another topology that comes up a lot is the, uh, the topology to have a centralized VXLAN um, segment um, from the top rack switches and, and, and in an IP domain with the equal cost multipath, but then running uh, VLAN from the servers up to that top rack switch. And um, this, just is thinking through some of this, uh, you could, um, it, re it requires some level of uh, routing, and it depends on how flexible you, you allow this topology to be, but uh, in, in a, a fairly, if you look at a fairly simple hub and spoke where you, you constrain it to the central uh, segment, hub segment, and then, then leafs, um, it's, uh, it's pretty reasonable. Um, there would be some work that's needed that doesn't exist today and so that uh, would figure out how to say, so if I need to get, if I know about I learn about a mat, uh, an endpoint that's over here on uh, server six, and I need to get to it from server one. Um, we need to know this, this switch needs to know, I need to, okay, I need to forward over a particular VLAN out that port to this hardware gateway. The hardware gateway would need to get programmed to say, okay, to get to that endpoint, now I need to go, it's, it's really out here, but I need to go to that, you know, this top of rack switch that's implementing the, um, the, the hardware VTIP schema. So it would stick it on a tunnel that would get it over here, and then this device would need to know um, what VLAN to map it to to send it out. And all that's doable with our current open flow and, and schemas, but we just don't have the control protocols currently in, in Open Daylight to do that. So this is a, a, another a, a, a use case that we want to make sure we cover in, in this model. Um, then thinking beyond that, there's different, there's more, um, you know, uh, you know, arbitrary types of uh, mappings. Maybe I, I don't want to, I don't want to go too crazy, but I want to have multiple uplinks. Um, or, uh, you know, maybe I just don't, I can, we can have any kind of arbitrary segments. Um, I, I just had thrown these out there just for consideration as we look at this model probably is not going to be the top priority to solve all these, these purely arbitrary use cases. The main, the main one we want to do is to go, you know, initially we got this flat, you know, single segment and then to move to this, this uh, the use case with the, the VLANs and the central core. Yeah, and then and then we also want to. Um, 
I mean, I think that I don't know how to. I don't know how well that if that ties in with the VPN service work or not. Uh, but we definitely you know, one of the one thing that's not up here that we've we've talked talked about um, is the you know interconnection of these um, clouds via VPN services over um, so between inter data center or inter cloud services. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you want a support for higher hierarchical support binding on Vietnam? Support for what? Hierarchical port binding. So, one, um, so I think, you know, the, the interface manager represents a, a set of hierarchical port bindings. Where, you know, OpenStack, I think is, so far doesn't support that. But one, one use case that we do want to support is the, the one that, you know, at least in the short term, is uh, the, uh, a container use case where you have containers um, inside of uh, a VM, and you could you have you have the container ports identified by VLAN IDs, and the uh, on top of a single, say, tap port, and we need to be able to distinguish it, each of those VLANs as logical ports, and handle so we can uh, hand avoid. You know, one of the the problems is that you end up you end up with multiple. Uh, tunnel encapsulations in that case, and we want to make sure that we only have one, or at least support that. Um, what, so, what is there a particular uh, <coughs> use case you're thinking of? Okay. Which component would manage those segments? So, um, I, I think the uh, you know uh, Netvert would uh, manage the uh, so Netvert would need to be told about the segments some from somewhere. Um, you know, OpenStack OpenStack does have the model of uh, uh, multiple segments, different. Uh, you can have different ML2 drivers. Managing different different segments, um, so I'm not sure where the how the you know exactly how the OpenStack would talk to um, Open Daylight to set this up, but Netvert would need to be told about the segments, and then based on the segments and the connectivity info, and then understanding where devices are. Uh, On this one, understanding where devices are connected in could could um, set the uh, configure the logical flows to make to make everybody be able to, to talk to each other. Um, what one other thing for anybody that's interested in looking at this? Uh, find my mouse. Where is it? Okay. Let me come over there. 
Oops. Um, so, anybody interested in looking, you know, looking at the uh, the Yang models or or the code that's going into this? It's uh, there's a basic uh, um, framework in place in a, in addition to the to the models. Uh, so it's under the, within the OVSDB directory, there's a netvert directory, and um, the API contains the Yang models, and then there's a renderers directory that contains the code for the renderers. Um, right now, there's, the only thing that's there is the hardware gateway, but pretty soon, you know, we're gonna be working on filling in the rest of it. Um, so that's all I have for today. Any, any other questions? So what we're we're actually looking, uh, reaching out to the hardware vendors to try to get some. We have some questions that well, Daya has been putting together some has some questions put together on the way things work. Um, but uh, we, uh, um, I'm not sure exactly what the question you're asking, but we're we're trying to validate. What uh, there, we currently there's there's already implementation for that hardware VTEP southbound, um, and it's it assumes a certain you know implementation. The schema is not really complex. That's right. For example, the particular switch may be maybe ninety five percent. Yeah. That conforms to the schema, but maybe slightly different. Is there any scope for an end user to give the customizers to customize or play with it nicely without really making a code change? Yeah, so I'm trying to think through it. Yeah, so probably with the schema, probably supports what you want to do, um, and you can access that directly through a, the a REST API. Um, however, once you know when we implement this in uh, Netvert, it's going to make some assumptions on, you know, if I want to set up a you know network, this is how I need to configure the the, the device via the schema, and that's where. Uh, you know, we'd have to, you know, the, the, have to look at the details. And what we'd like to do is try to test with as many different, you know, hardware devices as we can, okay. so that we can make sure that what we do it works. And if we find differences, then we'll have to figure out how to deal with them. Uh, but it, I mean, it's going to be code within Netvert that decides how to program them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the thing 
And, and for this, we really encourage hardware vendors that implement this hardware VTEP schema to test with the code and just see if it works the way you expect it to work. And you know, right now, like I said, there's the there's the the plugin, the southbound uh, plugin, and a set. Of, there's actually a, in the documentation and on the website, there's a um, a, a recipe for how would you set up the the device using REST calls directly. Um, and there's even Postman um, uh, files that you can load and, and uh, enable you to do it um, to just test at that level. And at the next level, it's going to be NetVert is going to be doing the, you know, the, the logic to take a, the, the more abstract configuration and actually program the devices, which is the way that it really end up used. So when, once that rolls out over the next, I don't know, couple months um, you know that it'd be great to to, to work with to try that out as well and you know and if if uh, there's you know have to make certain assumptions um, because the scheme is not a hundred percent you know it's not a hundred percent clear in all cases what you should do but uh, you know we can fix those Anything else? All right, thank you. Thanks. Just the, the hardware gateway uh, pieces that we we're looking at initially and the, the shared functionality. And it, it, it was apparent that a lot of the, the things that had to be done were the same from a, at least a, a high level. And just the way in which you do it is different. And so, in the, just looking at the layer two use case, which is primarily what's, what's happening in the, uh, on the hardware VTEP, that when, a, when you have a new port with a new Mac added to an OVS switch, you, you have to, um, on, the, on the OVS, OpenV switch, you have to add the flows for that, uh, the local flows for that to handle that Mac address. You have to go around to all the other uh, OVS switches and add remote flows to direct the traffic back to the, to the switch where it exists. You might have to add some tunnels. Um, and with the, with the, if you have layer two gateways, you also have to go out and program all those remote layer two gateways um, to direct traffic back to functionality into, different, into, into their own modules. So, um, and then thinking a little more broadly, um, we wanted to do this for the hardware VTAP, but there's no reason that it would necessarily stop there. So we want to do it in such a way that it's easy to add new southbound devices, potentially add different northbound um, APIs. So we do OpenStack, 
We probably want to look at some container networking, uh, possibly integration with uh, the network intent. Um, in, been talking about integration with VPN service. So I want to do it in a way that's, uh, um, that's modular. The, uh, if, is, if we're going to be breaking NetVert out into a separate project, we also want to have a, a proper interface for NetVert so that we can support these new applications. And, and as, as long as we're doing all this, we want to try to do it in a way that, it, it, makes, it, that makes it more scalable. So I just had a, have a slide in here to, to talk a little bit about the uh, layer two gateway support using the hardware VTAP southbound. And um, currently the, the southbound protocol plugin is supported, but the, the network piece to, um, to drive that via OpenStack is not there yet. It's a work in progress. And that's kind of, uh, if we go on to the next slide, one of the, the main motivations for this, this work is what we started looking at. How can we, how can we um, you know, when we've been working at, looking at this one southbound um, div kind of device, how do we add a, a new device? And when we started looking at it, it would require reusing uh, or re reusing a lot of the same functionality that all already existed, but there really wasn't a good way to do that, to break it up. So um, what we wanted to do to support this, uh, the hardware gateway was to break out some of the common functionality um, into reusable pieces and then um, just isolate the uh, device specific. All right, so uh, the next session is on the network Rearchitecture, um, also have called this net, netvert um, evolution, and uh, some uh, work that I've been looking at together with Sam, Vishal, and Anil, um, and it's uh, looking at taking uh, you know, expanding the netvert functionality. So currently, the OVSDB netvert project includes really two components. One is the OVSDB southbound um, to, uh, that uses the, implements the OV, OVSDB protocol, um, various uh, OVSDB uh, schemas, and uh, the NetVert, NetVert network uh, virtualization solution that currently is uh, supporting the OpenStack networking. So uh, it's uh, the, currently the, the NetVert is a, it's a fairly monolithic design. It, uh, fo it's focused on supporting OpenStack, the Neutron API, on the northbound side, and OVS switches on the southbound side. The, uh, and the goals of, of the work that we're doing here is to kind of break that up, make it um, allow, uh, uh, first of all, uh, to support NetVert as a separate application. Um, it's, uh, Right now, it's an integrated project. They're kind of different layers of the, the overall, overall model, and we're looking at separating that NetVert functionality out. Um, but also to make NetVert uh, more scalable, modular, and extensible. And um, um, w one of the things that I just on this slide wanted to point out was that this uh, NetVert um, currently uses interfaces with the Neutron Northbound via MDSAL and via the two uh, southbound protocols, it's using both OVSDB and OpenFlow to control these OVS switches. We've been working on, in this past release, the, the addition of uh, um, 